UFC 288 just recently wrapped up. And I'm going to recap the entire card. Decent card overall. The pay-per-view was definitely more on the mid side. Looking forward to talking about each of the matchups. Make sure you guys smash the likes. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We're going to start it with the main event of the evening. We got to talk about it. Aljamain Sterling beats Henry Cejudo on a competitive split decision in a fight that scoring-wise was kind of weird. I want to first talk about what I thought of the fight. I saw Aljamain Sterling taking a competitive decision. I thought Cejudo got the third round and the fifth round. Aljo from distance was able to land more strikes, kind of the range giving Cejudo problems, though Cejudo was able to hit him with some crisp punches, Aljo was ripping some heavy kicks and kind of throwing more of his looping style of shots, missing with takedowns, Cejudo would have moments where he gets on top, doesn't do a ton, Aljo kind of got back position on Cejudo, there was never a substantial moment where you thought, oh shit, the fight may be over, it was, oh, somebody has close to dominant position, Loses it. Highest level of the game. It makes sense. But the big issue that I have right now is the scorecard. So Derek Cleary scored the fight 48-47 in favor of Aljamain Sterling. He is essentially the deciding scorecard. Other judge Michael Bell, 48-47 for Cejudo. Other judge Eric Colon, 48-47 Sterling. But I have no issue with Eric Colon's scorecard because he scored it as I kind of saw the fight. Round one, Aljo. Round two, Aljo. Round three, Cejudo. Round four, Aljo. Round five, Cejudo. That, to me, is a very sensible scorecard. But then when I look at Derek Cleary's scorecard, I say, what the fuck is he seeing? How do you score the fifth round for Aljamain Sterling when Cejudo finished strong, landed a takedown, was attacking with strikes, nice punches, definitely had Aljo on the back foot? That is an incompetent scorecard. I guess the right guy won the fight, but by that scoring metric, that card, the wrong guy won the fight because that's a fucking delusional card. I don't understand, man. Some of these judges, I don't know what angle he's sitting at. I don't know if he was looking at his phone halfway through the round or what, but I don't see how anybody scores the fifth round for Aljamain Sterling. To me, it was clearly Cejudo finishes the fight hard and won the fifth round, and I thought that Sterling got it three to two. It was close. I picked... Sohudo to win so you know it would have been great to see him get it done but I'm not gonna rant rave and cry about him losing because I definitely thought he could have lost it close enough competitive rounds for sure that second round was close to even the first like it's almost every round it's, there's close moments throughout the whole thing but little things that changed it length for Aljamain Sterling in the grappling positions in certain rounds. But Cejudo was able to land some takedowns. He landed some decent punches. Definitely was behind in the volume overall. Now Cejudo's in the weirdest spot because Sean O'Malley jumps in the ring and is talking shit with Aljamain Sterling because they're fighting next. Even Marab's getting involved. I'm like, Marab, can you can you get off? Why why's two guys gotta go against one with uh you know what I'm saying with Sugar Show? Don't steal his jacket. Let him talk shit to your boy. They're fighting each other. And I think. It's a good matchup, shit. I'm just thinking of the actual stylistic matchup. I worry that it's going to be Aljo dragging ass on uh, Sugar Show 2. But ultimately, Cejudo talked about, hey, am I going to retire now? Is this it for me? It's a tricky spot to be in if you're Cejudo. Because who's he going to fight next? Marab? Maybe? Does he want to do that, though? He's not going to get an immediate title rematch. There's 0% chance. I'd be shocked, actually, if that happens. Especially now they already brought in Sugar. Does he somehow wait out and then say Sugar knocks out Aljo? They give Cejudo a title shot? I don't think that would make a lot of sense either. So very no man's land like position for Cejudo. If he's willing to reclimb the ladder, sure, he could get back in a title fight. But he's not going to be in the immediate picture. He'd probably be in a top contender fight next time out. And for Sterling, it's Sugar show next. The crowd booed the fuck out of Aljo after the fight. And they're in his area, East Coast, New Jersey. He's a Long Island guy. He's from, you know, not far from there. They boo him. Aljamain Sterling might be the most disliked UFC champion ever. They talk about Tyron Woodley wasn't liked. Sterling's getting booed in his home spot, home region. Like, he's not, come on, Long Island and New Jersey. I don't know exactly how far it is, you know, but it's close. It's fairly close. It's northeast. And he's getting booed heavy. Aljamain Sterling. 
one of the least likable champs, I guess. And he kind of puts it on. You know, he wants to be that heel, I guess. And he plays his character decently enough. You can see the real Aljo on YouTube. Good win for Aljo in a close fight. Listen, competitive. I thought he did enough by this much. And he deserved the win over Henry Cejudo. No, he finished like shit. That's not how a champion should finish. He finished on his back. He finished getting pushed against the cage. He finished getting touched up. That's not what I want to see from champions. Same with Islam getting fucked up in the fifth round versus Volkanovski. That was even a worse fucking beating in the last round. But fight game goes as it does. Ultimately, Aljamain Sterling gets a competitive win. Doesn't do bad things for his stock. Even though he just beat a huge name, it should burst his stock through the roof. I just think the fan interest is relatively low on Aljo, to be 100% real. But hey, good win for Sterling. Sudo might call it. Sugar Show, next up. Co-main event. Bilal put it on Gilbert Burns for five rounds. I mean, the only thing we can say here is, what if Burns would have not hurt his left shoulder on that takedown? Do we got a different fight? Who the fuck knows? Bilal Muhammad won every round. 90% of the exchanges outboxed him. Holy shit. The kicks of Bilal, write that note down. Bilal Muhammad, A1 kicker. His body kicks are nasty as fuck. And he goes high too. Crazy speed on it. Burns tough as hell. Goes to full five. Bilal Muhammad's that guy now. So he's fighting the winner of Colby Covington and Leon Edwards. He's the most deserving contender. There's no argument there. He's grinded his way to the top of that weight class. Clear spot for Burns. Take some time off. I don't think you got to retire. But damn, man. Title fight might be... I'm going to say yes. It's out of the picture for Gilbert Burns. I don't see him ever getting a title shot ever again which is sad because I like Gilbert Burns a lot. Bilal's going to be fighting for the belt. How does Bilal match up, though? Leon and Bilal or Kobe and Bilal? I don't know why. I, I favor Bilal over Kobe. With Leon, I just think the striking is going to be neg like a, what, negligible, I think is the word. It's going to be too much slickness from Leon, too much skill from range. He's better at the body kicks than a Bilal. Whereas Kobe, I can see Bilal touching up. So if Kobe gets the belt, I can see Bilal dethroning him. I think stylistic matchup, Leon is harder. I'd probably pick Leon over Bilal Muhammad, to be honest. Styles make fights. They already kind of fought before. We saw a little bit of a preview, and we know what Leon was able to do from distance. Bilal, though, beats Burns. He's going to get his world title fight. And for Gilbert Burns... Back down the rankings. I think take nine months off. Let your body fully recover. He fought back to back to back in like a hundred something days. He's fighting every week. Two pay-per-views back to back in the co-main event each time. And now he tries to go five. His body took a beating. And that takedown changed everything early. He couldn't throw the left hook. Overhands landed. He did decent for shit. For only one arm, he did pretty good. Hopefully Gilbert Burns gets a fairly solid fight coming back. But I think a layoff is most important, and let's get his body recovered. I know he's not getting any younger. He'll be 37 when he comes back. So I'm telling you, Gilbert Burns not fighting for a title. Unfortunate, man. I wish he could, and I wish I could tell you he's gonna, but he's definitely not. Next fight, Jan Shaunan laid waste to Jessica Andrade. A straight, flattened Andrade. Listen, Jessica Andrade tried to bully Jan Shaunan, and Shaunan was way slicker and looked so scary on the feet. She's huge too. 5'5 five, five versus 5'1. Five, and like to knock out Jessica Andrade. The hell? Got a fucking mustache hair in my mouth over here. To knock out Andrade. Jesus. My apologies, people. Listen, it is what it is. Yan Shaonan put it on Andrade. It was a fucking absolutely tremendous performance. All right? Fucking Shaonan's messing with my mustache over here. Listen, I'm telling you guys this straight up. Shaunan Rose Namajunas. That's the fight. Marquee matchup. Book that shit. Give me Shaunan versus Rose Namajunas next. I'm very curious how that fight goes down. I think Shaunan fucks her up at this point. Andraj, bro, I should have known she was done when she quit against Blanchfield. She's finished with. Done. I don't think she's never going to win a fight again. But at the upper echelon against the Hungry Lions, I don't feel like Andraj still pulls it. Oh, but she's younger than Jan. Yeah, but she's already reached the pinnacle of the game. 
I don't think Jessica Andrade comes back well from this. I think she needs some time off. I mean, sure, she can fight another contender at 15, or is she going to say, fuck it, I'm going back up to 25 if she's going to be like a gatekeeper type chick now for the top five. She's still going to beat a lot of girls in the world, but I think 115, she's actually worse at. The weight cut fucked her up. She had chin, her punch resistance, the competition level. 115, there's some killers, man. And Yan Xiaonan is one of those underrated killers who absolutely evolved after Carla Esparza laid waste to her and destroyed her. She came back and kills Jessica Andrade. Maybe Andrade versus Carla Esparza next time. That's a good matchup for her. I think Andrade Esparza could be cool. I think that Andrade would still beat Carla. So yeah, let's do that next. Beat down Central though. Next fight on the card, Movzar, Evloyev, and Diego Lopez. Talk about balls and heart. Diego Lopez brought everything he had to this fight. Just wasn't enough. Movzar wins it on the scorecards. Diego had a good last round, though. Nearly had a knee bar. Nearly had an arm bar, too, in the second. Like, moments, man. He rocks Movzar early in the fight. Huge moments. Diego Lopez is a great addition to the UFC featherweight division. But on short notice, and your first UFC fight, you're going to fight Movzar, Evloev. Respect to him being that competitive, but ultimately was not able to get a win. But who really thought that he was going to get a, a W? Nobody. I mean, I may have thrown down a slightly degenerate light bet on him, you know what I'm saying, live. But that was more with the intention of the what if. And damn, it was like for a second, holy shit, what if? Movzar, minus 900. You knew he had the fight. It was clean. Movzar with the win, competitive for sure, and he was tested, but he, he reigns through. And I'm telling you, Diego Lopez, he's going to fuck a lot of people up in the featherweight division. They don't know. Hell's come unranked, guys. Watch out, because Diego Lopez, he's going to snap some fucking limbs, and I think he's going to lay some people clean. He'll be back in the ranked level, top 15 soon enough. Not next time, but after that, maybe, maybe two more. Build him a little bit. He's a good fighter and a fun style, fan-friendly as hell. Debut, day's notice, giving Movzar hell, I'm a fan. I like it a lot. For Movzar, he's right at the top. I mean, optimal situation, I'd probably say, is a Bryce Mitchell rebooking. I think that makes a lot of sense for him. He still needs to get like a signature name on his record. But Diego Lopez brought him to hell and back. Charles Jordan, Cron Gracie. Listen, Cron Gracie should stick to jiu-jitsu. He's done with MMA. 100% real. I'm not fucking holding any punches here. Kron Gracie, in my opinion, did not look like he trained any striking for his three years off, like at all. He looked worse on the feet than I've ever seen him, and he seems to not have the same speed and spunk that he used to. It just seems like his motivation for the fight game, maybe the fire is gone. Stick with jiu-jitsu, man. Nothing wrong with that. He's done in the UFC, in my opinion. Charles Jourdain looked good, whooped his ass. Beat the shit out of him on the feet. Stopped any submission attempts. Kron was trying to pull guard. This is out of date now. That's it. The elite specialist game is over. You need to be good everywhere. And you can be great somewhere, but you need to be good everywhere. And Kron Gracie has some of the worst hands in the UFC ever. Toughness for sure, because he took bombs from Jordan, ripping to the head and body, but he had no shot. Jordan beat his ass. After the fight, Jordan called out Edson Barboza. Give it to him. Give him Edson because Charles Jordan, I think, brings fight of the year candidate. That's the one. Do Edson versus Charles Jordan, UFC. Fuck the rankings. Fuck what should happen. Edson's an older guy. Give him somebody who's going to stand with him. And that's Charles Jordan. Give Jordan the shot. He's on a good win streak now, too. And he fucked Kron Gracie shit up, man. Whoop that ass. Great performance. The feature prelim was crazy. Drew Dober and Matt Frivola early. Frivola's having success in the middle of the round. Dober's coming back and landing, backing Frivola up. And then fucking Frivola lays him clean, man. Drew Dober got dropped. Punch right down the guard. Boom. Some follow-up ground and pound. I know D Dober like kind of recovered quick as the ref stopped it, but his face was destroyed and he got dropped legit. I thought he was done, and I'm not going to complain about the stoppage. Matt Frivola brought the fire to Drew Dober, and then after the fight, Frivola calls out the Sugar Show, which is an interesting thing. The Sugar Show, what am I saying? The Patty Pimblet Show. The fucking, uh, you know, Batty, the Batty Showcase. He wants that money fight. He wants Patty's hype. He said, Patty, you can't just be picking fights, and Matt Frivola is picking a fight with him. So I guess, you know what, Frivola... Does he earn it after this one? Maybe, because he gave Drew Dober hell. That's a huge W. I feel like Frivola, though, won't get the Patty Pimblet fight. Too much time needed for Patty to recover. And the UFC's not going to throw him Frivola. Maybe Bone Fiend will fight Frivola 
And I think Bonefim is a fucking scary matchup for Matt Frivola. Bonefim's a killer. That dude's on the come up. I feel like Frivola loses that fight. Sick to get a win, though, over Drew Dober for Matt Frivola. Jumped his stock tenfold. He talks about his world title shot now. He's moving up the ranks. He is. He's getting close. I mean, maybe they won't give him Bonefim. I guess they'd be fucking him over giving him Bonefim. But I don't think he gets Patty the Batty. And I don't think they give him Jared Gordon. Who are we going to give him? Hanato Moicano next? Maybe. We'll see. Frivola. Big W. Drew Dober. Tough loss. Sent back far. Kelly and Zechaku. He looked like a monster against Devin Clark. Got hurt early in the fight. And then was able to hurt Devin Clark against the cage. Used his size beautifully and locks up a guillotine. John Jones like puts Devin Clark to sleep. Listen, and Zechiku was winning fights when I thought he wasn't good as a fighter. And he's winning against guys that are good. He's gotten way better. Skill set has evolved tenfold. And I think he's running towards the rankings. I don't have a specific opponent next. I think he'll fight whoever they throw him. And he should continue with that mentality. But I'm telling you, light heavyweight division, you got a dangerous man in Nzechiku because he wants it so fucking bad. There's no quitting him. Got stunned a bit. The chin, you know, could be in question. He was knocked out against Daoon Jung. But he's on a good win streak now and taking out Devin Clark with a fucking sub standing modified guillotine that puts him to sleep. That's impressive stuff, man. Nzechiku with the W. Good shit. Chaos Williams. Listen, he barely got past Bedoya. I thought they could have gave it to Bedoya. Chaos Williams shooting wide shots. Bedoya sniping him. Listen, I don't understand how it says 36. It's not true. He's 26. Bedoya looked incredible for a UFC debut. And to lose a close slash semi-controversial split decision against Chaos Williams starting your UFC career. I know it's going to sting because it's a loss. This is huge. Bedoya is a future top 15 fighter in the world. His combinations are good, his kicks are crazy, his speed's awesome, and his chin is A1 because Chaos hit him with everything. I thought Bedoya could have got that decision, I'm telling you guys. It was mad close, and I was like, dude, they could have edged it to Bedoya by this much. They really, I feel like they, they could have, maybe they should have. There's more potential with him as a prospect, but Chaos still a dangerous guy. Doesn't have the crazy power like we thought, nor the technique. Man, that chin comes up. He'll go to throw and the chin comes up. He leaves the head there. He doesn't have great uh, head movement either. He's kind of sitting in the center. He's a beast athlete. He's got good durability. He hits hard. Depends on the matchup. And I feel like I was thinking about the welterweight division. Chaos can edge some wins out against a lot of guys. And he'll sleep some people too. But Bedoya, the way that he looked, I'm telling you guys, put him on your radar as somebody that is going to be slept on but has a big future in this game. Rolando Bedoya lost the fight, but in my opinion, he's a winner. Because next fight that he has, I'm scared for his opponent. And the betting side is very, very interesting. Especially if he's a dog. Super dog. Rolando Bedoya, savage fight. Loss. But the real winner here. Chaos gets it done officially, though. Verna Jendudoba absolutely dominates Marina Rodriguez. I don't even want to fucking think back to this fight. Marina could not stop the grappling attempts. Listen, she had some moments in that last round. She was throwing some good strikes. But the takedowns of Jendudoba are crazy. When she lands a takedown, she controls you. That's it. Her grappling's A1. Jiu-Jitsu's off the charts. I think that Verna is... Kind of like the X-Factor dark horse in that uh, women's strawweight division. Certain matchups, she's really going to fuck people up. I mean, what about her and Rose Namajunas? I think there's a chance she beats Rose. <coughs> Excuse me. I'd like to see Verna get another big fight, though, because beating Marina's legit. Marina beat Yan Xiaonan. Bullshit decision, though. Does the UFC like Xiaonan after the knockout? I think they do. They're not going to throw Verna that fight. Because Verna, in my opinion, kind of underwhelmed with the style. Very grind heavy. Great positional control. But not fun to watch. Like as an MMA fan, you're not like, holy shit. It's control. Positional control. Transition. Hold. Submission attempt. Great shots. Clean win. It is what it is. Good W. Marina couldn't stop the grappling. Parker Porter, Braxton Smith. Braxton Smith came out like a bat out of hell. And... He didn't seem to have much cardio nor jiu-jitsu training because as soon as it went to the floor, he looked like a boxer who had never done jiu-jitsu. There was a fight recently at Gamebred FC Friday night. It was uh, Ryan Coos 
versus uh, Jared Grant. Jared Grant is a bare knuckle boxing former champ. Coos, I believe, six and one MMA fighter. This is the comparison. Grant had never done MMA, had no idea on the floor. He looked better defensively on the floor than Braxton Smith did. And Braxton Smith is a legit MMA fighter. That dude had never fought MMA, only done boxing. Smith looked like how I would imagine a guy who's only boxed before would look when fights hit the ground. I think there's so much improvement that can be done, but he is 33. Note that. He doesn't seem to have the grappling instincts. Even at Derek Lewis, was just throwing people off of him. I thought Braxton would have that type of pressing strength. He didn't. Parker Porter ate some shots, threw some heat back, and then gets a win because Braxton shot on him, gassed, and then Parker with the ground and pound. Good win for Parker Porter. He looks better losing that body fat. Shout out to him. He proved me wrong there. Good performance. Ikram Ali Askarov. He was getting touched up early with punches and kicks. Phil Hawes looked nasty. And then the perfect one-two flattened Phil Hawes. It was so fucking brutal. Phil Hawes is fully unconscious before he hit the ground. Ikram Ali Askarov, guys, is a terrifying welterweight. Welterweight. What am I saying? Middleweight. I wonder if he can make welterweight. He's terrifying, though. I'm telling you guys right now, outside of the top 15... Lots of dudes are in trouble. His grappling is so good. His striking is there. He's got a chin. I mean, Hamzat knocked him out with an uppercut. Big whoop. It's Hamzat. He calls out Bo Nickel. And DC was like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. DC knows. Because Ikram versus Bo Nickel, that's one of those hype killing fights. He calls out Bo, which I love, and he's trying to attack that hype. But if the UFC is, you know, in the Bo Nickel business, they don't give Bo Nickel Ikram Ali Askarov. Because he is way too well versed as a fighter overall. Even though Bo's got great potential. And maybe two, three years down the line, it's a different conversation. Right now, Bo's got to be fighting the Sean Gores of the world and work his way up. Ali Askarov, sick W though. And I think he's on the fast track to contention. Or at least rankings. First fight of the night, Claudio Hiberio puts Joseph Holmes out. Listen, early Joseph Holmes was able to land some takedowns. Was able to strike a bit from distance. But... Holy shit, he burial sits in and is just throwing bombs. Eventually was able to hurt Holmes. Holmes is covering up against the cage. I don't know what the ref was waiting for. And then he finally jumps in and stops it. From distance, Holmes looks good. But what I was concerned about, he doesn't have the knockout power and he doesn't have the wrestling base. Two things that, in my opinion, are major keys to beating a powerhouse like Claudio Hiberio. At 185... I think Hiberio, I don't want to say he's undersized, but he does look a little small for 85. Does anybody else feel that? Let me know in the comments. Because I feel like Hiberio could be fighting at 170 potentially. Where does he go from here? I mean, he wouldn't do well against Ikram Ali Askarov, other middleweight who's on the card. I don't want to see him fight Joe Pfeiffer. You give him some back-end middleweights. I know he lost his debut as well versus uh, Abdul Razak Al-Hassan. For Joseph Ugly Man Holmes, unfortunate, takes another L. I don't know. I don't think they cut him yet, but he could be released from the UFC soon. He's still young, though, at 27, but just doesn't have the sting in his shots, man. And he missed weight, too, at 185. They might cut him, actually, because he missed weight as well. And he got stopped badly and turtled up. Claudio Huberio, knockout win, getting the UFC W's started for him. Overall, I want to review the picks. We started the night off with a win, Claudio Huberio. Then Ikram wins, so we're at 2-0. and Then we lost with Braxton. Parker Porter fucked him up. We become 2-1. and Then Verna beats Marina. We become 2-2. Two and two. Chaos, controversial slash close split. Hey, we still won it. We're 3-2. and two. And Zechiku with the win. Holy shit, it was a great performance. We got it done. We moved to 4-2. and two. And then Matt Frivola crushes Drew Dober. I become 4-3. and three. Jordan kills Cron Gracie. Worst pick of all time, maybe. We become 4-4. Four and four. Movzar, thankfully, takes out Diego Lopez. We become 5-4. and four. But damn, Diego pushed him. And then Jan kills Andrade. 5-5. Five and five. Bilal kills. Uh, dominates Gilbert Burns. 5-6. and six. Then we lose with Cejudo by split in the main. We become 5-7. and seven. Damn. Under 50% is fucking terrible for me. I rarely feel like I go under that mark. So seeing that pisses me the fuck off. But it is what it is. We learn from this. We learn from this. It is what it is. Don't ride against the Bilal hype. Andrade losing. You don't pick her after coming back. Well, women's fights, bro. Pick the fucking dogs, okay? Verna, dog. Jan, dog. I got to just remember, like, up my dog pick percentage by 20% at least on the women's fights. Like, I should just be like, oh, the dogs probably got a shot. Weird card, though, man. The dogs that came through on it were Verna, Matt Frivola, 
Yan Xiaonan, Bilal, and uh, this fight was a pick'ems with Aljo. And I know at the end of it, I know Verna was a pick'ems too with Marina, but at that time, she was a dog. Overall, though, guys, it was a great week of content. We hit 16,000 subscribers, so I got much love and appreciation for all of you. Make sure you smash the likes. If you guys are new, subscribe. Turn those post notifications on. I hope you guys enjoyed the great content all week, and I definitely hope you enjoyed the recap show as well. Back tomorrow, as always, with the full card predictions for uh, next week's card, Almeida versus Rosenstreich, which is a great fight night, and I'm really stoked for it. I think it's going to be better than this pay-per-view card. Much love to the people, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace, everyone.